Hey, so uh, I'm back from Game On. Lots of fun. Exhausting this time, more so than other times, and for good and different reasons. Last two years I've been to Game On Con in Seattle that uh, Jeff Newell runs with his buddy, uh, his buddy, his po posse of vesties, uh, the uh, fishing vest wearing staff members. Uh, the last two times I've gone there, I've played lots of individual games of, uh, you know, war game style stuff. And uh, had a different experience this time. And in fact, you know, in the past, I played, last year I played, I think, 16 sessions of, you know, a wide variety of things. I've got in a couple of turns of uh, um, the Blitzkrieg Legend, five or six rounds of Combat Commander to learn that game system a little bit. And you know, all sorts of fun, lots of lock and load, lots of World of War, and uh, some other, lots of other war games, right? Some old SBI stuff as well. And same the year prior. Well, this year I only played one game, and uh, that one game, if you've been following the blog and all the spam I've been uh, pushing out uh, during the three days that I was gone, or four days I was gone, was you know uh, the Third World War from GDW. It's a Frank uh, Chadwick design. Really amazingly uh, sublime is probably the word I want to use. So uh, I, we need someone to come up with a refresh on this thing. And uh, I know there's the Adam Starkweather Doomsday machine or project, whatever it's called, uh, out there. Uh, I don't know when that'll ever get done. It's with MMP, so we'll, I might not see it before I die. So who knows, right? Uh, there's a game I would love to get involved with, right, and try and make that thing a reality tomorrow as opposed to two freaking five years from now, right? Anyway, let's talk about the game uh, and the, the con in general. So it was packed. There was 120-odd people there. Uh, Saturday, lot, they've got a separate room for all the Euro gamers. Uh, some of that kind of filtered into the wargaming area. And, you know, I'm okay with that. We can have a couple of Euro gamers floating around. Uh, I think Jeff, getting a little old, a little slow in his old age, played a lot of Euros. And, you know, Jeff, really, started out as a war game con. Now you've made it family friendly, so I had to, I had to mind my P's and Q's. I couldn't just go around cussing everywhere. There's kids running around everywhere. There was only kids there on Sunday, I believe, and I left on Sunday. It was a great blend of people. We had guys who were playing really complex and heavy war games who could take a break, go around the corner, play something light, come back in. Uh, there were guys playing a game in the lobby of the hotel at 2... I went to bed at 2.15 on one morning, and they were still finishing off two rooms in a boom or two booms in a room or something like that. Hilarious. Looked like a lot of fun. Uh... I got some, I actually, you know, I did play more than one game. I got some Starfleet, uh, Star Trek mini things in. I played some of that. That was hilarious, playing with Rob Bottas. Uh, I think he was three sheets to the wind, and I was probably four and a half, because he gave me this big uh, bottle of Canadian beer that was nine and a half percent. And I already had my bourbon with me that I was sipping on, or slamming, sipping, slamming, same thing. Hilarious time. So uh, we have the now. I now have the bodice maneuver down pat. I know how to do that. Uh, you'll in incur shield damage every time you do it, but you can do it. Let's see. Uh, lots of great guys there. There were a lot of the folks from uh, the Advanced After Combat crowd, and I tell you, if uh, Dave and Jason and uh, the other folks from AAC are anything like the the fellas here in Seattle, then uh, I got to get to get to Consim World because that would be an absolute blast. Uh, all the guys were uh, uber cool, and we uh, we had a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. They were playing uh, Formula D <clears throat> after all the wargaming was done. Uh, until we until they got kicked out of the the room, the conference room, they were screaming and yelling and jamming trannies and all sorts of fun things. So. Uh, Lots of uh, very mechanical terminology going on in that game, let me tell you. Uh, amazing array of war games being played. Multiplayer Panzer being played, which was an absolute hoot. Uh, I did that last year, didn't get a chance to do it this year. So, I 
think overall, uh, I, you know, walking away from a con, and I've never been to a con before, so other than the, the three times that I've done uh, Jeff's event. And my initial reactions were, wow, this is really cool. I get to play a lot of games and meet a bunch of people, cool people, and realize that not all war gamers are the archetype that we uh, joke about, right? Not everyone uh, has poor hygiene standards. So uh, we, I met a lot of really cool regular guys, and that was very pleasing to me uh, to know that uh, there are normal people out there and I'm the weird guy. So we had, uh, so what was my point that I was going to make? Yeah, so, oh, so, so I thought it was all about playing lots and lots of games, right? Well, when I get uh, into this Third World War title, walking away from that, exhausted as I was, because we, we, we went from 7.30 or 8 in the morning until uh, at least midnight, uh, two days straight, <clears throat> and I got in Wednesday and it took me four hours, I was, you know, sitting up by myself to kind of get it all squared away. So it was a long, long uh, period of time and lots of little breaks here and there because you get to wander off while your, your op opponent is uh, playing. Um, that was a very rich experience in of itself and I think if we had had a four-member uh, four team like we thought we were going to have, or potentially have, um, that would have been a di another different experience. Next year, uh, I think Ralph Shelton is going to join us. Mike is going to try and come back from Birmingham. It'll be myself. And uh, I think we had one or two other expressions of interest in terms of uh, trying to play the game. And we could take six players. It would be a, a, lot, a lot more fun. Uh, and I say a lot more fun in that it would be a lot, le a lot more relaxing because you'd have more people knowing the rules and, uh, and less geographical area to manage. But part of the great challenge is one of those fog of war slash uh, pressure of uh, decision making, so compressed decision making cycles is, uh, you know, uh, Michael and I really worked hard every turn trying to get as much done as we could because the initial turns were taking more than two hours a turn. And we ended up with, uh, you know, getting it down to two hours or a little bit less. Be and just because we wanted to get through more of the game. And without rushing it, we, we really enjoyed the pace of play. We played quickly and effectively, I think. And that, I think that's a sign of, good, of a good war gamer. Uh, from Michael, I was really impressed with Michael. I'd never met him before. We chit-chatted online, spoke just the one time, and got together had a blast. So kudos to him for blowing through his uh, mileage and uh, coming to coming over to play. So, Game on Con, a huge event. I was going to talk about the game, but really, I mean, just go read about it yourself, right? It's a, it's a great game. If you can get a copy, it's out of print. Uh, it's showing its age in terms of map design and uh, counter art and all that stuff. The rules are timeless. I would say you could probably lift those rules up verbatim with a few clarity weeks here and there and apply that to a modern Third World War uh, uh, title. And in fact, what a fantastic idea it would be either to update that game or create a new game and not, and not do 1985 Third World War, right? Do, do, the, do the current situation or do uh, uh, provide a system that allows you to have a broader brush or a broader exploration of uh, world, potential World War Three conflicts in a global sense, you know, what would be the driving uh, mechanisms to make things happen to, to get to a, a third world war situation? Okay, uh, enough said about that. Let's, what else do I want to tell you guys that was interesting? So, uh, Game On, I, I think, uh, is one of those unique cons that has, uh, based on everything else I've heard about other cons, uh, that has a very uh, close familial feel to it and uh, really gives you a sense of the, gives you a sense, see that screensaver popping on and off in the background. Uh, gives you a sense of uh, belonging to a group if you uh, take the time to book in and, and book games with people and ask people you don't know to play games. 
Uh, I enjoyed seeing uh, Mark Simonich walking around the room, uh, dropping in on Fire on the Lake, and then hearing his comments about the game. And uh, uh, some of the other designers that were there, you know, Jeff, uh, Jeff, I forget your last name. Jeff has the Gallipoli title from GMT. Fantastic, awesome scale looking game. Really cool command mechanics. Uh, that was great to see. Uh, Mark Mazzucchi was there with uh, teaching people how to play Red Winter. Um, surprised he didn't bring a few copies to try and sell them or something like that because I, I would have bought a copy. Um, I want to be cool. Uh, let's see. You would see war game designers playing other games, seeing games being play tested. So obviously uh, there was Jeff's game that was being play tested, Gallipoli. There was the, uh, and that's not the name of it by the way. It has a proper name, but I call it Gallipoli, uh, which is really not very helpful for you if you're trying to find it on GMT. But uh, Ralph Shelton was testing uh, a, a coin game with pointy spears, uh, set in uh, uh, England in Britannia, and. You know, it looks like everyone was having a great time with Ralph. I don't know whether Ralph was the entertaining part of the game playtest or whether it was uh, his fantastic card uh, creation skills or what it was, but uh, he's he's playtesting a title and everyone was having a good time there with that. I'm trying to think real quickly what else was being playtested. Oh, there was the Triumph and Tragedy uh, little uh, blocky game thing, uh, the World War II theater that had... Uh, uh, lots of interest there. There's a couple of guys were cranking on that bad boy pretty hard. There was another dude that had a a game that was styled after the Napoleonic Wars GMT title, and I forget his name. Strapping young man, good looking dude, had a beard ish thing. He had a lot of people playing his game as well. Anyway, I forget I forget his name. I should have really had notes for this, right? Notes to make sure we didn't miss anything. We'll do an update at some point. So there was one, two, three. There were probably six games being play tested there on and off. Starfleet, uh, not Starfleet Battles. Uh, uh, yeah, Starfleet Battles was there. SBI, Battle for Germany was being played. Uh, lots of old SBI titles got cranked out. Uh, there was a political, Avalon Hill political game there. There was one of the last Avalon Hill titles. Uh, oh, now see, I've just drawn a blank now. I can't remember anything anymore. Anyway, bunch of great gaming. Wonderful to see all these titles and take pictures and talk to the guys about the games and understand a little bit more about them and see if there was things that I, you know, I wanted. Uh, 12 minutes of rambling, time to go. We'll talk to you guys soon.